There are now signs that as we go into the rest of November and beginning of December that winter could really take hold of parts of the United States, making for an active pattern, even some snow. Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice watching this pattern, what we call the sudden stratospheric warming. You're going to hear that term thrown around a lot online, and what it basically means is in the way upper parts of the atmosphere, uh, 6 to 20, 30 miles above our heads. We talk about this in my Clemson class, talking about in the upper parts of the stratosphere, how it can have impact at the lower parts of uh, the uh, the surface. And what's going to happen here is that the polar vortex going down the line is going to have some disruptions. And anytime you disrupt the polar vortex, it allows the jet stream to do some funky things. Until then, we're going to see this. We're going to see above normal temperatures. We're going to be quite toasty. But once it can reload, once the atmosphere reloads and that disruption from the polar vortex happens, it can send some colder air way far south. Let me know where you're watching from right now. Uh, uh, I am Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. I do videos like this talking about the pattern. Please like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications. What I do is give you an early outlook as to what's going on. I couch it in a responsible way. I've uh, been doing TV uh, weather for 20 years now, and uh, I like to do this on TV and on air. It's just kind of a way to dig in and be honest and transparent with my forecasting here. So the GFS model here along with the European model, which I'll show you in a moment, showing that we're going to have some action begin to form around the Thanksgiving weekend. This would be going into Thanksgiving week. you got a couple of dips in the jet stream here and there. And then it looks like as we go deeper into the forecast here toward the end of the month, that the atmosphere, the jet stream, is trying to do some different things. And what this could be is it breaking off a piece of what's going on up here toward uh, the Arctic Circle and uh, bringing in some of that polar air. That's what happens. Now, the polar vortex is not actually moving down here. But what happens is when the polar vortex is disrupted and a piece of it is 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 not doing its normal circular pattern way up into the upper parts of the latitudes there, it can bring in some serious cold air. What that does is buckle the jet stream way far south. And in this case, as we move forward here, it's going to be giving us a better chance for uh, some colder air. So right now, as we go deeper this weekend, Sunday, you see this dip across the East Coast. It's a pronounced dip. Northeast is really going to cool down. Upstate New York, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont. I mean, we're talking about some serious cold and then some serious snow Sunday night going into Monday. After that, though, everybody on the East Coast is actually warming up. Look at this big ridge building in here. There are no signs of colder air on the eastern half of the United States. Now, that gets us to the Thursday prior to Thanksgiving. That'd be next Thursday. Let's go deeper out into the forecast here. And you see this big dip back toward the west. That could be the early signs of something happening. But I think it's more than that. I think whenever you get some blocking back here, What's going to happen is it's going to cause the jet stream to begin to buckle back over here. And you start to see the signs of that on Tuesday the 25th. This could be some serious cold air. Now, where this goes, we're out in way out land. Hours 258. But we do have pattern recognition here that there's going to be a pretty pronounced dip in the jet stream here. Now, where that goes, where it brings in some cold air, does it go east of the Rockies? Well, this European model says, yeah, gets into the Midwest. This would be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. This would be the 29th. This could be some serious polar air brought to you by that sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, basically, the warming in the upper parts of the atmosphere causing the polar vortex uh, circulation to be disrupted, and that allows for a piece of the polar vortex to break off and come down to the south. And in this case, it could be a pretty pronounced uh, portion of that, which would be way out there in our time frame. So there, there is a pattern recognition here that toward the end of the month, we could have some action. Just like hurricane forecasting, folks, if you're here for when I was tracking hurricanes, we can't tell you exactly where a hurricane's going to go a week out, 10 days out, but we can tell you, hey, the pattern is favorable for a hurricane. In this case, the pattern is favorable for a serious cold blast, and if things can align, there will be another blast of some snow for some areas. Now, where that sets up, most likely the upper Midwest, maybe even farther south and east than that, which could give some of us some action. And there are some early clues as to that. Let's look closer at what the European model is trying to say as far as precipitation type and where it's going to go. Going into this weekend, you got some rain forming on Sunday, and then it changes to snow up toward Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, into Vermont. Uh, quite a bit of snow, actually, this model showing. The rest of us is just going to be 
quite mild, actually. And then going in the middle of next week, Thursday, Friday, there's going to be another storm system. This could be actually some storm activity. Backing it up here for Thursday afternoon, 1, 2 o'clock. Pretty stout low pressure here. So eastern Oklahoma into Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Louisiana. We could be dealing with storms back here, maybe even into Mississippi and Alabama. Tennessee can't rule that out but now the the low is way up here and the front's dragging out so I don't think that translates east on Friday however some rain does probably the first rain that the Carolinas has seen in a while coming in this time next week Thursday Thursday Friday Saturday's time frame now beyond that you got another rain coming in as we go into Monday the 24th now this could also be some strong storm activity pretty stout little low right here this one's farther south could that be severe weather it's possible now, that would be system number two that brings possible severe weather storms, rain, and maybe even colder air coming in. But does that cool the east? Well, it shows it starts that cooling trend. Here's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. You've got Arctic air setting up up toward Minnesota, uh, parts of Wisconsin now into Michigan. And now that's trying to spread east of the Rockies as this low moves in. And that could bring in some rain. This would be the Friday after Thanksgiving. And then look at that cold air toward the end of our models. That would be some serious Arctic air coming in. Right now, I don't see another low pressure system to, to give some, some moisture for a possible snow right behind it. But it does look like, according to this model, there could be some snow in Kentucky, Tennessee, into parts of Indiana and Ohio. All right, so that would need to be watched closely. And it could be toward the end of that pattern that we actually start to see some of this come to fruition. As far as snow totals are concerned, we got some showing up back here through the upper Midwest, you know, Great Plains. And then you get up here toward the Northeast, we'll get some of that snow. Let's look in closer at some of this activity. Rain, 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 rain coming in for you. Refreshing the new model here. Let's map that out. The last full run of the European model going all the way out. Big time action here, setting up over the next week to 10 days through East Tennessee, Southern Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri could get a lot of rain. Same story up through Kentucky. Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, into Ohio. We could have several inches of rain. And if this comes to fruition, toward the end of this period, it could turn quite active and wet right before Thanksgiving and right after Thanksgiving as we start to get a lot more active in the east, uh, according to our models. Near term, let's look in closer here. As we go into this weekend, here comes this front Saturday. Saturday into Sunday, you've got some rain. That rain changes to snow here toward upstate New York. Pennsylvania, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, UP of Michigan. All right. Beyond that, going into this upcoming week, we've got some rain trying to come in for some areas, a little bit more snow in parts of Pennsylvania. But really, it's about warming up this week. High pressure coming in, a couple of warm fronts. This right here could bring in some storms down the road. Thursday would be a storm activity for Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi southern parts of Arkansas into Texas and Louisiana. So we'll have to watch that. Could it be stormy? It's very possible. Latest computer model times out some of this for the East Coast. Look a little bit closer here. Rain changing to snow, maybe a little bit of ice. Upstate New York through Pennsylvania, and then it changes to some snow. Could be some pretty decent snow here through Sunday into Monday, about 24 hours. Then you kind of shut things off. and actually turns a bit more mild this week. We get that front coming through on Friday, bringing in some rain and possible storms back toward the west Thursday. And then we get into that time frame I told you about the Monday before Thanksgiving. Here's that more stout low. That's system number two. Here comes number three at the very last frame of our European model right in there. That stout front has some action behind it. Now that would activate the Great Lakes. You get some Great Lake effect snow uh, that could move into the Appalachian Mountains, which would need to be watched very closely. As far as snow totals are concerned on this European model, look at this. We'll map it out the whole way. That's through the weekend. Got some pretty decent snow up here through upstate New York, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. We're talking 8, 9, 10 inches of snow. Meanwhile, the rest of the United States quite dry. All right. You get to the last few frames of this European model, the Appalachian Mountains beginning to get some northwest flow snow. Same story for Tennessee, maybe even in Kentucky. You'd be getting some action as well. Florida. You've got some rain at times. I don't see a good chance for soaking rain until you get to about this upcoming Thursday, Friday's time frame. You see it here on the last few frames of our 18Z run. Let's flip it over. Here we are into Friday. We've got some rain trying to come on in, but it doesn't look like a lot. In fact, a lot of Florida misses out on this rain on 
Thursday and the Friday. It may take until the second system comes in, Monday into Tuesday the 25th. So we could be talking about a week or more before you get a good chance for rain across Florida. Then eventually you do, and then it looks like toward the end of this pattern, you could be dealing with some storms by the time we get to the Saturday, Friday, Saturday after Thanksgiving, and then a pronounced cool down coming your way after that. So European rainfall totals for Florida, just not buying it for the next six days. Let's go out seven, eight, nine, ten. Nope. Have to get to next Sunday into Monday to finally get half an inch to an inch of rain. It looks like finally toward Thanksgiving, the model's trying to paint about a half an inch to an inch of possible rain here toward the end of this pattern. Simply put, when we look at this southern sudden stratospheric warming event, uh, usually leading up to those type things, um, we're quite warm. It's just when the sudden stratospheric warming happens is when the polar vortex is more vulnerable to breaking off a piece of it. And there may be some signs as we get toward the end of this forecast. This would be days 8 through 14. So this gets us two weeks out. This would go through about, um, about the 28th. The end of the month, it looks like we're above normal, but there are some signs back toward the west that some of that polar air could be trying to enter the United States and could sink it farther to the south, which would, of course, bring in higher chances for some colder weather, and we'll have to watch that. I do think things turn a lot more active along the east coast as we get to that time frame. Folks, if you appreciate this no-nonsense approach to forecasting weather, talking about uh, the patterns as a whole, where we could see snow, please like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. We will keep you posted. Thankfully, we don't have anything in the near term besides that snow coming in for the Northeast, which we'll be tracking as we go deeper in the weekend. But next week, we're owning, honing in on Thursday for possible storms. And after that, it will be Monday for possible storms beyond that. I promise to keep you posted. And we'll talk soon.